All right, welcome to pro, uh, video two. In the first video, what I did is I took the template code that was provided and I copy and pasted it into my compiler and I proceeded to remove all of the errors. So this is an exercise in which you get to use your compiler to help you to remove errors and warnings. The feedback and uh, was very good and I was able to now get working code. And so now, uh, if, you, if you jumped into video two, you should go back and watch video one. And the things that I did, some of the things that I did is I added the number guess definition, I added the member functions, I added all of the initialization in my constructor. So let's uh, check my program six, yeah. And I'm using my program six as a guide for anything that I can possibly copy and paste in here. I built it, it compiles, it works. And let's see what happens when I try to do it run. Well, it doesn't do a thing. So that's fine. It does compile, but now it's time to play computer. So all of my function, def all of my member functions are here. Some of them have you know, the accessor and mutator functions are very simple, so they have already been set up. The rest of the functions have not. They're, just, they're here and they're empty, but they're ready to be set up. But, and then I have my prototypes for my two non-member functions, play one round and set up level. And then I have my main function and I have my two function definitions for set up level and play one round. So what you need to do next is play computer. Lofton and I like to call it Kate play computer. What does that mean? It means that you do have working code and it, you know, you guys are, are learning, you're students. So everything is very, um, these assignments, everything is very dependent on, on a lot of different features in order to make a, an assignment like this and have you guys do it, you know, in the, in the amount of time you have to do it. So the best thing to do right now is to play computer. What that means is you start at the very first instruction in the main function and you follow along and uh, add to it and keep adding as if you were, uh, you know, the computer doing the, doing, doing this, uh, running this program. And that's when the program runs, it's gonna start right here. So basically when I run it and it does nothing, what is it doing? It's starting right here. It's declaring a string called name. It's declaring a string called uh, yes or no. And then it has this stuck in this while loop. It's just sitting here in this while loop. So what I need to do is I need to get the main function to work and then keep adding features and keep adding features until I, I get my assignment uh, completed. All right. So the first thing I want to do is declare an object of type number guess. So the way that I declare an object of type number guess is I use the name of my class and then I can name it whatever I want. I'm going to name it active game. So here I've declared a, an object of type number guess and I hopefully in your constructor, I put a, I put a C out here, which you can remove. But when I build it now, this should print onto the screen that the constructor has been called and I now have an object of type number guess. So let's check that. The default constructor has been called and it's sitting here. The reason that it's sitting here is because if I go back to my main function, I will notice that it's just sitting here in this, this yes or no has a, va has a value of y and it's sitting in an infinite loop. So we need to get this loop done. And the nice thing is I've already done most of this work in my program six. So if I go here to my program six, I get the name, I ask the user if they would like to play. So right here, and then they're going to input and then I'm gonna call the play one round function, but actually I have to call the setup and then the play one round. So I have two function calls that need to be made. I need to call the setup function first, and then I need to call the play 
one round function. But I'm not ready to do that. Now I just want to get this loop to work properly. And let's uh, go here. All right, so now let's test it. It should ask the user, do they want to play a game? And as long as I enter yes or anything other than no, it's going to keep going. So let's test it. The default constructor should only be called once. So it called the default constructor. I enter my name. Do I want to play? Yes. Do I want to play again? Yes, 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 no. All right, so that loop is working. So now it's time to work on setting up. So I don't want to call the setup function until I go and implement the set, setup function, right? You, you need to get the function to work as you expect it to work, and then you can call it and test it and make sure it's working the way you want it to. So let's scroll down here to our setup function. What does our setup function do? Our setup function is going to ask the, it's going to take our current game by reference. It's going to ask the user which level and then it's going to use the mutator functions to set the number of guesses and the upper range. So let's uh, add the rest of the conditions here. So if, it's le if the level is one, it's four and 15. If the level is two, it is, I believe, six and 50. And if the level is three, Then I believe it is, check and make sure, 6 and 50 and 8 and 150. So it's going to 8 and 150. Then I always like to put a last else because there would be, if I don't, it's, there's going to be a, even though we're enforcing the level by, with this do while here, it, uh, it, you should, I always like to just put it last else anyway, but we really are enforcing the level because we're not allowing the user to enter um, anything other than a one, two, or three. All right, so let's uh, test this. We can test this by calling the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the function call to this function. I'm gonna pass my active game and then I'm going to use an accessor function to make sure that it is working properly. Obviously, you don't have to do this, but I want to just test. Okay, the um, number of guesses is active game dot get num guesses. So I can't, I can't say active game num guesses because num guesses is a private member function. So I, in order to check to make sure that, and this is just a follow up to make sure that it is working as expected. You certainly don't have to do this, but I'm going to set up the level. I'm going to try it and make sure that as I set it up, it's always setting the correct number of guesses. So you always should add C out statements to test what you're doing. You know, sometimes you don't have immediate feedback to know if things are working as expected. So I always like to add, I like to make sure that my setup level is working as expected before I move on to the other things that I need to do. So let's build this, make sure that it's working. All right, I enter my name. Yes, I wanna play a game. I put level two, so num guesses should be six. Yes, put level three, num guesses is eight. Yes, put level seven. It's, that's the do while. Okay, so put level one, num guesses is four. So now it seems to be working as expected. So I can um, get rid of this or just comment it out. And now all we have to do is figure out how to play around. So our play one round function is not a member function. So playing around, we are going to pass the name and we're going to pass an active game. 
but playing around involves a bunch of things. So what is the first thing that needs to be done? Oh, when you play around. I did not realize that I had you guys call play one round and set up here. Okay, that's fine. So since we know that our setup level works, we can now remove it from here. And when we play around, then we're going to, it's going to automatically set up, call to set up the level. Okay, I'm going to repeat. In my main function, I wanted to test how the setup level worked. But now that I tested and I know that setup level is working, I don't need to have any of this anymore. When I call my play one round function, when I go into my play one round function, my play one round function is going to call the setup level function and that and so I don't need to call it twice. I don't need to call it from main and I don't need to call it from uh, play one round again. I only need to call it from play one round. All right, you guys hopefully follow that. Now, a couple of things that are very interesting. So in my play one round function, I'm able to access these member variables with the dot operator because these are public member variables. I am not able to access num guesses with the dot operator because num guesses is a private member variable. So those are things that um, you have to be aware of when you're working on this. All right, so anyway, so now we just have to follow along what happens. Well, the num guesses is already done. Setup level is already done. Upper range, upper range is already set because we've already done that because in the setup, it already set that up. So the next thing you need to do is generate the solution. So generating the solution, I can just take my program six here, go to the generate the solution, copy and paste that from here into my member function that generates the solution. And some things that I need to change. Generate the solution is a member function, which has access to all the member variables, so I do not need to use the dot operator. So this should generate the solution. And now actually I want to call the play one round function. Um, let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to generate the solution. I'm going to print the solution. This loop I'm going to comment out for now. I just want to make sure that I'm properly generating the solution. And all right. Now I can't access the solution. Be why can't I access the solution? Because it's a private member variable. So what I need to use to get the solution is the get solution accessor function. So I'm going to call my play one round function. This is playing computer. So I'm going to show you from my main function, I'm going to make the function call to play one round. I'm going to pass the name of the user and my active game object, my object of type number game. So it's gonna jump out of my main function into my play one round function then it's going to uh, initialize some variables. These are public member variables. Then it's going to call the setup level. It's gonna tell the user how many guesses they have. It's going to get set these variables as well, like we already did in program six. Then I'm gonna generate the solution, print the solution onto the screen. And if this works, I'm going to leave the rest for you to complete on your own, but certainly if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. So all you have to do is this loop, which most of it's already provided for you, print the solution and um, take that information from your program six. All right, enter my name. Yes, I want to play level one. So I made a solution is three. 
Yes, I want to play it again. Level three. All right, so it seems to be working. It's generating the solution. Obviously, you don't want to leave that because what good is a game if you already see the solution? So now you need to figure out, based on your program six here, you're going to have to implement the guess input function and the process guess function and complete the play one round. So if you take a look at your process guess, this is now a member function. So you're, gonna, you're not going to need to use the dot operator because it's a member function and can access all of the variables directly. The guess input function is also a member function, which will not need the dot operator anymore. And then you might have to use accessor and mutator functions in your play one round function in order to access any private member variables. And you can access any public member variables directly by using the dot operator. So hopefully this will help you guys to work on this assignment. It's a good idea to get this assignment done, you know, pretty uh, and understand what's going on with the member functions. And then moving on to program 11, you're just going to be separating into uh, separate files.